Hi, um, this is the next video lecture in Introduction to Machine Learning. It's the final video um, on the topic of random forests. Now that we know all the ins and outs of random forests, let's talk about advantages and disadvantages of this method. So all the advantages that um, regression trees or classification trees have also apply to random forests, all of them, yeah, without exception. We don't have to do much pre-processing because they're very robust to outliers and so on. They can easily handle nominal variables, factors, categories. Um, they easily handle missing values through surrogate splits and so on and so forth. Yeah, so all of that still applies. Um, they're very easy to compute in parallel because the training on the different bootstrap samples is essentially independent from each other. So you can do that in parallel on a bunch of uh, cores or machines. Um, empirically, the random forest uh, tends to have a solid and good performance. And it's rare that it like fails completely. Um, it has a couple of nice features that allow it um, to be basically interpretable in the sense that we can compute variable importances in the sense that we can compute these random forest proximities that we can use to basically visualize our classification space. Um, it directly integrates performance, estimate, performance estimation or estimation of generalization performance by just looking at um, the error that it's making on the out of bootstrap observations used not used for the building of the tree um, it works very well on high dimensional data because like regression and classification trees it has this inbuilt variable selection that's even made stronger so to say here um, by the feature, random feature subsampling that's part of the random forest but we don't look at all of the features in every split yeah, so that's uh, very good in high dimensional data too because it reduces the uh, amount of computational work that we have to do um, very, very much. Yeah, so in that sense, that's the next point. It also deals with irrelevant noise variables fairly well. It's robust against that because it tends to just ignore them. Um, and what's also nice about random forests is that they actually don't have to be like, it's, they, they are very stable with regard to their performance um, in terms of how big exactly do you make the ensemble, what specific stopping criteria do you use for the trees that are part of the ensemble, all of that, it's not very sensitive to that. Yeah, there are many other methods that are much, much more difficult to get right in terms of their hyperparameters. All right, um, disadvantages, well, for regression, specifically if we have a smooth, um, smooth effects of the feature vectors or of the features, they're often suboptimal because still what we're doing is basically um, we're fitting step functions. Yeah? Um, they have the same problem with extrapolation as for trees, but then again, most machine learning methods don't do well at extrapolation. Um, there are much harder to interpret than trees, right? A single tree can be complicated, but still interpretable in theory at least, but 500 such trees, there is no way, yeah? But on the other hand, there is a lot of techniques available nowadays that you can use to, to visualize and understand and, and make random forest interpretable. So maybe that's not such a big disadvantage anymore. Um, Implementation can be fairly memory hungry. Yeah, we, we're saving a bunch of trees, we're saving all the surrogate splits and so on and so forth. So that can be expensive. And um, actually generating predictions for new data, that can be demanding, specifically if your ensemble is big and the data set that you want to generate predictions for is big, because obviously you have to feed all of these observations through all of these trees and that become can become quite time consuming and resource consuming. Right. Um, so to sum up, 
what are random forests in terms of our overarching framework of hypothesis space risk optimization okay so the hypothesis space of a random forest is a sum of step functions over rectangular partitions or subspaces of the feature space um, how complicated this step function can become is controlled a by the number of trees in a random forest and b um, by how complicated each of these trees is allowed to become yeah so by the stopping criteria used to construct the trees in the ensemble but in general random forests can recreate very very complicated step functions yeah okay so that's the hypothesis space basically step functions over the feature space mm. What's the risk? Well, just like classification and regression trees, we can use any kind of loss function for regression or classification um, that we want. Uh, we're completely free in picking and choosing. But like for classification and regression trees, um, some of these will be easier to handle than others. Yeah, so for example, if you think about uh, split computation, yeah, split computation for nominal variables uh, can become very, very difficult to do if you're not using a squared error loss or um, a logistic or Bernoulli loss. Okay. Um, optimization. Well, optimization is an exhaustive search over all randomly selected candidate splits in each node of each tree to minimize the empirical risk. So kind of like trees, only much, much more of it and not always on the same set of features, but on randomly selected subsets of the features. Mm, the good news is, as I already said, that this, well, fairly challenging search for optimal split points can be easily paralyzed. Yeah? It can be paralyzed over the different members of the ensemble, or it can even be paralyzed uh, node-wise by basically looking in parallel at all the different features. Okay, so that's it for random forests. Thank you for listening and goodbye.